Hi friends, welcome back to Nutrition. In this session, in a DC machines, we'll start armature reaction topic, uh, which is very time consuming topic. Okay, let us see armature reaction. <clears throat> see, first of all, what is the definition of armature reaction? Effect of armature flux on main field flux is called armature reaction. Effect of armature flux pi a and main field flux pi m is called armature reaction okay so here main flux means what already we discussed uh, generally we'll be having field winding if uh, some current is flowing through field winding so whatever uh, flux is produced that flux can be called as main flux okay and I mean uh, giving how current is flowing in field winding means it is depending on the type of machine we are using. If it is separately excited machine, will be connected to some separate DC source for the field winding for excitation purpose. If it is a self excited machine, current required for the field winding, it is generated by the machine itself. Anyway, if current is flowing in the field winding, uh, so flux will be produced. That flux only we are calling as a main field flux. Okay. And what about this armature flux? So whenever main flux, main field flux is coming, so that main field flux, whenever generator curves that main field flux, EMF will be induced. Because of that EMF, so you'll be getting armature current, uh, IA will come into picture. Because of armature current, you'll get armature flux. Effect of armature flux on main flux is called armature reaction. First of all, let us assume that, let us assume that we are having a, a uh, field winding is placed on this stator. Everybody knows that in a DC machine, we have to place field winding on the stator, armature winding on the rotor. So please try to assume for, for time being, uh, this is nothing but the entire thing as a DC machine. Okay, DC machine. And you know, we are placing a uh, armature winding. This is blue color, uh, whatever connectors I just showed. Uh, this nothing but, these are nothing but armature uh, windings. These are placed on the rotor. And uh, and field winding is placed on the field poles. Field poles are attached to this stator frame or uh, yoke. Nothing but indirectly field winding is placed on the stator only. Armature will place on the rotor only. Okay. Because of uh, current flowing in a field winding, because of current flowing in a field winding, so you'll be getting main field flux. You'll okay, be getting main field flux. So let me show that uh, main field flux here. Okay. So always flux lines will go from a north pole surface towards south pole surface, right? Okay. Let me use one color for uh, main flux, guys, so that we'll be having some clarity. Yeah. Let me use a uh, yellow color, uh, yellow color for main flux. Okay. So that we'll be having some clarity. Let us see. So because of uh, uh, current flowing through field winding, so main flux is uh, produced. That main flux always flows from north pole surface towards south pole surface. I took this pole as north pole here. I, I think you are able to see this one, north pole, okay? And this is nothing but north pole surface. This is nothing but north pole surface. And uh, what of this one? Nothing but south pole surface. I took here example north pole, south pole here, okay? And everybody knows that flux lines always start from north pole surface. It will reach south pole surface. Therefore, your main flux is starting from north pole surface it is coming towards south pole surface like this okay this is nothing but direction of your uh, main flux let me show you okay similarly let me show remain you know, some more flux lines pi m which is going from uh, north pole surface towards south pole surface going from north pole surface towards towards south pole surface so like this you can show some flux lines here starting from north pole surface going towards south pole surface starting from north pole surface going towards the south pole surface okay starting from north pole surface going towards the south pole surface okay so if you want i can show some more uh, aromas here for main flux yeah this is what i can say main flux lens pi m Just starting from north pole surface going towards south pole surface okay guys so i think now it is not necessary to show this uh, field winding this stator portion all the things let me erase this one so please let me erase this portion okay so like this you are getting a main flux lines which are uh, starting from north pole surface going towards south pole surface okay guys now so whenever this uh, main main flux is coming 
now because of joint traction emf will be induced in that conductor okay let us assume that direction of uh, tpm please try to understand direction of tpm at the direction of uh, a rotation of rotor in a generator i took in a clockwise rotation i think i, I think you are able to see right this tpm assumed in a clockwise rotation so let i'm just i'm just ready clearly here let, let me see assumption only so direction of tpm so in everybody knows the generator rotor rotates the direction of tpm that means direction of rotor or direction of tpm in generator i assumed in a clockwise rotation here okay and we know in generator okay uh, motor action takes place because of motor action whatever the torque we get uh, that torque okay nothing but electromagnetic torque that electromagnetic torque will be opposite to prime motor torque if prime motor torque is uh, assumed in clockwise rotation your electromagnetic torque should be in a anti clockwise rotation okay so guys now tell me here for this direction of already in a generator point i am just discussing entire uh, armature reaction i'll be discussing generator point of view in generator uh, tell me rotor rotates in the direction of tpm in the direction of tm we as already we discussed okay this topic in simple loop diagram of uh, this generator if you please try to see that yes definitely in generator for having generator action among tpm and tm tpm should be more than for having generator action so obviously rotor rotates in the direction of tpm so resultant rotation of rotor in generator will be clockwise rotation okay clockwise rotation so guys for clockwise rotation of your uh, for clockwise rotation of your rotor so tell me what is the direction of uh, emf or current induced in armature conductors armature windings which are placed in the rotor please try to tell me and north pole so whatever conductors are there so can you please tell me what is the direction of emf in this uh, conductors is it cross or dot similarly i am asking what is the direction of emf in this conductors which are under south pole is it dot or cross or? so that's what i am asking simple question i am asking so guys for understanding that let me do one thing so let me take one connector okay under north pole let me take one connector so, be, so that we will be having some clarity so let me take here uh, north pole means i'll take it as north pole here okay and here it is south pole let me take here south pole here under north pole let me take one connector uh, for understanding point of view let me take one connector uh, under for understanding point of view and here under south pole also let me take another connector for understanding point of view okay so this becomes a coil here this becomes a coil and whatever the direction of uh, emf will get under north pole conductor in all those conductors will be getting same same direction only if it is cross here only cross if it is dot here also dot okay similarly in uh, under south pole uh, if we get dot here in entire uh, conductors which are under south pole will be getting dot if you are getting cross in entire conductors which are under south pole will be getting cross okay and tell me guys what is the direction of uh, main flux always you know uh, fluxes will be starting from north pole surface towards south pole surface I got here uh, a direction of main flux nothing but I'm just indicating with the yellow color they are uh, going from north pole surface towards south pole surface that is from left to right in our example okay so let me take here left to right yes let let me take a left to right and I told you in a generator so ultimately uh, among a TPM and TM which is uh, more dominant here TPM for having generator action TPM should be uh, more than TM so ultimately general direction of rotation will be the direction of TPM I am assuming the direction of TPM in uh, which direction? Please, TPM I just assumed in which direction? Clockwise. Okay, clockwise. So guys, for clockwise rotation, tell me what the tangential motion at, I mean, uh, at this conductor, what the tangential motion at, at this conductor I am asking. For a clockwise rotation, see, for a clockwise rotation, under north pole, uh, whatever connect is there, for that connect it will be, tangential motion will be upwards like this. Okay. this is what force due to prime mover prime mover and what about for clockwise rotation um, uh, the conductor which is under south pole will be downwards i'm saying tangential motion downwards the name of force due to prime mover which is downwards here so i think you know uh, direction of motion of the conductor nothing but fpm you know direction of uh, magnetic field you know nothing but yellow color so by using a thumb and forefinger uh, by using right hand by using a uh, Fleming's right hand rule I can decide direction of EMF in this connector and in this connector please apply Fleming's right hand rule already you know because of generator action whatever EMF induced okay the direction of EMF is given by Fleming's right hand rule 
Tell me in this uh, in the in under North Pole, whatever content is there. Here we are discussing here. So please apply uh, Fleming's uh, right hand rule here. When a moving connector upwards, your thumb should be the direction of your PM and curse the magnetic field. Your four finger should be the direction of your yellow color uh, arrow mark. And uh, an EMF or current is induced in that connector. Please apply Fleming's right hand rule clearly. You know Fleming's right hand rule, how you have to show your thumb, forefinger and uh, center finger. Your uh, thumb, forefinger and center finger should be mutually perpendicular. Your thumb in the should be, in the show, your thumb should be the direction of FPM. Your forefinger should be the direction of your yellow color. And the direction of center finger and middle finger indicates direction of EMF or current induced. If you apply Fleming's right hand rule properly, you will get under North Pole, uh, under North Pole, whatever connect is there in that connect will get a direction of current, it will get a cross into the body, into the uh, laptop, into the board means it will get a cross. Similarly, if you apply in the connector which is under South Pole, so once again your thumb indicates direction of your FPM and forefinger indicates direction of your uh, this uh, green color, the direction of magnetic field. Uh, direction of EMF for current will be out of the laptop or I guess out of the board, nothing but dot. Okay guys, dot. So that cross means what under North under North Pole, whatever uh, conductors are there. So please show in those conductors direction of EMF for current. I took it as what cross. So please let me show cross here. Cross, 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 cross. And here I got dot right. Let me show dot here. Dot, 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 dot. dot. Okay. This is nothing but whatever I am just using blue color. This is nothing but direction of uh, armature current. Armature current I can say IA. Armature current I can say IA. Please try to understand. This uh, direction of cross dot whatever I said. This is nothing but direction of uh, armature EMF or I can say direction of armature current IA. IA. Okay. IA. So because of this armature current, uh, you will get once again armature flux will come into picture. Because of armature current, you will get armature flux will come into picture. So try to understand guys. Under no load condition, under no load condition, what about uh, what about the armature current? Uh, it is zero. That means here cross dot. I don't have any cross dot. Simply IA value will be equal to zero. If IA equal to zero, what about pi A equal to armature flux equal to zero? So whenever pi A is not there, you know what is the definition of armature reaction? Effect of armature flux pi A and main flux pi is called armature reaction. Whenever pi A is not there, do you have any armature reaction? No. So simply I can write a. Uh, under no load condition, IA equal to 0, pi A equal to 0, RMH reaction is absent. Though it is a very simple point, please try to understand. So under no load condition, RMH reaction is absent since pi A is equal to 0. Because IA equal to 0, RMH reaction will be absent. Is it okay for you? Now let us see. First of all, well, uh, before, uh, go, before discussing further, let me explain some uh, this axis. What is about, what is Q axis, what is DX, all those things. Then I will come back to this one. Okay. See guys, here axis which is passing along poles, along poles, whatever the axis which is passing uh, along poles, along poles, along poles is called, I can say, polar axis, other name, direct axis, other name, D axis. Is it okay for you? Axis which is passing along poles, along poles can be called as polar axis, direct axis, D axis. Suppose if axis passing between poles, see this is but in this example, north pole, south pole, between these two poles, some axis uh, passing here, this axis can be called as interpolar axis because it is passing between poles. And one more name is here quadrature axis, or I can say Q axis, or one more name, GNA. GNA means what? I had given clear here. Geometrical neutral axis. What is that? Geometrical neutral axis. And one more name is there, axis of commutation, axis of commutation. I'll tell you what is the reason why I'm just calling it as axis of commutation, axis of commutation and it's axis of symmetry and also can also be called as the, this one can also be called as brush axis, brush axis, brush axis. Okay guys, brush axis. So now please let me give a definition for uh, this uh, geometric neutral axis and uh, one more axis there, magnetic neutral axis, all those things. So first of all, let me discuss geometric neutral axis. Then I'll come back to MNA. So I'm just, I'm just going to discuss about GNA or Q axis. Please try to understand. I'm just going to discuss about GNA or I can say Q axis or I can say interpolar axis or axis of commutation, axis of symmetry, brush axis, all this. Okay. So guys, GNA. What is the name for that? GNA means abbreviation. Geometrical neutral axis. 
See, it is the perpendicular to main field flux. That is very important. Please let me highlight this point. So, this uh, uh, GNA will be perpendicular to main field flux. Main field flux. Okay, main field flux. That means in our example, let's try to see. Main field flux means what? I can say this uh, yellow color lines, you know, yellow color lines. Okay. So, your Q axis or GNA will be perpendicular to main flux means perpendicular to this yellow color lines. Is it okay for you? Right. Next. It is also called as the brush axis. Also called as brush axis. See, regarding this, uh, I discussed it in a construction of DC machine. Please try to refer that video. So, why I am calling this uh, axis as brush axis means generally brushes are shown placed along uh, this Q axis. To be frank, to be frank, I had given explanation in a construction of DC machine. I am just showing brushes. This is this is nothing but brushes. Okay, I am just showing brushes uh, are just shown along the Q axis. To be frank, brushes are placed along D axis. Along D axis only we are placing uh, brushes. But why I am showing uh, brushes along Q axis for the explanation I had given in the construction of DC machine? Please try to go through that. So, brushes generally place along D axis, along uh, I can say the polar axis, but the brushes are shown along the Q axis. Okay, that's the reason why your Q axis can also be called as a brush axis. Okay, please try to refer construction of DC machine. There, I told you uh, uh, why whenever I discuss, I was discussing about brushes, there I, I had given an explanation. Brushes generally place along D axis, but brushes are shown. Um, are shown uh, they are placed along the Q uh, along the uh, Q axis. So that's the reason why Q axis can also be called as uh, what? So brush axis, okay? And why this axis can also be called as axis of commutation? Very simple. So we'll discuss after commutation of armature reaction. Commutation topic is it? So commutation takes along uh, quadrature axis along Q axis only. That's the reason why. This Q axis or GNA can also be called as axis of commutation. Okay, since the commutation occurs along uh, this axis, we are calling uh, GNA as axis of commutation. And why we are calling GNA as axis of symmetry means it's a geometrical, I can say, it's center of the machine between two posts. It's very clear, no? Between two posts is actually geometrically, this is actually, actually center point. Uh, between these two poles uh, that's why we are calling this axis can also be called as axis of symmetry that is center of the machine between two poles okay so this is about your gna so i think it is clear right is there any doubt uh, i mean please try to understand gna will be having some clarity if you uh, try to see these uh, four points okay and what about mna this is very important guys mna means magnetically neutral axis what is that Magnetically neutral axis. Why I'm using the word neutral also? I'll tell you. Magnet neutral axis. See this definition also. This statement also I'll be explaining. Uh, just give me just um, some time. I'll be explaining that after some time. See, MNA means it is the axis along which if we place conductors, there will be no induced EMF. I'll tell you what is the reason also for that. So magnetically neutral axis is the one along which no induced EMF. I'll tell you that. Before that, so MNA will be perpendicular to whom? Perpendicular to resultant flux or I can say air gap flux pi r. Air gap flux I can say pi r. So guys, try to understand. Suppose under no load condition, I told you if IA is not there, what about pi A value? Pi A also equal to 0. No? Whenever pi A is not there, so you are uh, resultant flux equal to I can say main flux only. See, if pi A is there, effect of pi A and pi M that gives you armature reaction, resultant flux will be somewhat different. Suppose if pi A is not there, your uh, resultant flux itself becomes your pi M. I can say your pi M itself becomes a pi R. Main flux itself becomes your pi R. That means, as I told you, under no, I, I, I'll write one point here. Under no load condition, as I told you, under no load condition, under no load condition, under no load condition, your pi r equal to pi m. What is the reason for that? Since uh, pi a equal to 0. Why pi a equal to 0? Since i a equal to 0. That's it. And we know that mna will be perpendicular to whom? Generally, it is perpendicular to pi r. That pi r is nothing but pi m all here. So, perpendicular to pi m. When 
under no road condition mna is perpendicular to pi m already we know already we know gna will be perpendicular to perpendicular to main flux that means what is the reason what is the conclusion from that guys under no load condition gna and mna will be coinciding with each other if you want you can write here see this is but i told you this is but the interpolar axis quadrature axis axis of commutation q axis axis of symmetry brushes everything okay and i had given a gna also see gna okay gna okay and uh, this gna itself becomes uh, your mna only it's gna itself becomes mna when under no load condition only guys because under no load condition your uh, resultant flux is equals to main flux so mna will be perpendicular to pi r nothing but mna will be perpendicular to pi m already gna is a perpendicular to pi m so gna mna will be coinciding under no load condition this point is very important but don't think that under load condition also gna and mna sorry gna and mna will be coinciding no because under load condition because of pi a is not equal to zero under load condition so your pi r is not equal to pi m your pi r is different so your uh, uh, mna will shift from uh, okay normal from uh, gna to some some angle okay by mna will uh, shift from, from gna by an angle of uh, theta that we'll discuss anyway but as of now, this is remember under no load condition, your MNA and GNA will be coincident with each other because uh, we know GNA will be perpendicular to pi m and uh, MNA will be perpendicular to pi r, that pi r equal to pi m under no load condition. That only had given clear here, okay. Under no load condition, MNA and GNA coincide with each other. This statement is valid only under no load condition, guys. This is very important under no load condition because under no load, your pi r equal to pi m. That's the reason why m n and gna will be coincident with each other. But under load condition, yes, your uh, pi r is, is it is not equal to pi m now. So your m n will shift from gna by an angle of theta depending on the amount of load. Okay, so that we'll discuss anyway. So we'll discuss, guys. Uh, so as of now, let us assume that we are discussing only under load no load condition. And no, let me go for load condition. Uh, I already told you under load condition because of general traction. So type of EMF induced in armature uh, uh, in armature winding is EMF. I mean, I mean to say direction of EMF induced in armature conductor, which is under south pole, uh, which is under north pole is cross, which is under south pole is dot here. Okay. Now, now tell me under loaded condition and load condition. So obviously. IA it is not equal to zero now. IA will be, uh, IA some value will be there. So pi A also will be there. Effect of pi A and pi M is the only effect of pi A and pi A effect of pi A and pi M is only armature reaction. Now let us discuss how uh, uh, flux will be disturbed here, how flux waveform will be disturbed. I mean uh, uh, you know I mean, how it will be disturbed, all this will see clearly. See, guys, before explaining that point, you tell me if uh, there is no pi a. If there is no i a, that means under, under no load condition. So see, this only yellow color flux lines only will be there for us. Do you agree or not? That means uh, flux waveform is uniformly distributed. See, example, if you take North Pole, under uh, this region, under this region, how much flux is there? Same uh, flux will be there under this region also. Do you agree or not? See, say so it is flux waveform, flux is uniform distributed. Now because of, I mean, I A is not equal to 0, pi A is not equal to 0, whenever pi A will come into picture, then let us see how uh, flux waveform becomes a non-uniform distributed, all those will see clearly. Before that, please let me erase this portion, whatever I just shown here, yeah. Under no load condition, it's clear that flux only pi M is there, it is uniformly, it is uniformly distributed. Now let us discuss under load condition, whenever IA is there, whenever pi A is there, because of pi A, what is the effect on pi M? Because of uh, effect of uh, pi A and pi M, how flux waveform will be uh, disturbed, all this we'll see clearly, okay? So guys, please tell me, uh, We I already told you, this uh, cross dot means, I assume it has a direction of your uh, armature current IA, when our armature current uh, is a cross, tell me because of armature current, you'll get armature flux, pi A will come, no? 
can you please tell me what is the direction of uh, armature flux here is it clock or anti clock so i'll be using a uh, laser point please tell me so for if direction of armature current is cross here tell me direction of armature flux by using right hand thumb rule please use uh, by using right hand thumb rule your thumb indicates direction of your uh, current cross rapid fingers indicate direction of armature flux that means thumb direction of current i said it's a cross so please show into the board into the board means if you show into the board into the board your thumb should be into the board your rapid fingers remaining four fingers are the no rapid fingers that shows the direction of your flux tell me is it is clock or anti clock clock or anti clock please try to respond i mean try to uh, try to think and tell me so what is the direction of harmonic flux we get here is it a cross i mean a clockwise anti clockwise direction of harmonic flux i'm saying if the direction of harmonic current is entering into the board direction of harmonic flux will be in the direction of clockwise so so please please i'll get direction of harmonic flux like this okay this is what i'll get harmonic of flux direction of harmonic flux okay so it is like this clockwise no clockwise okay and here i am getting direction of armature dot that means out of the board your thumb should be out of the board so your rapid finger should be anti clock direction so please let me show direction of armature flux in anti clock in anti clock rotation uh, like this like this okay guys now try to understand clearly here let us understand here let me give uh, names for this poll tips that is very important here names for this poll tips names for this poll tips okay so i am just giving names for this poll tips this is for the south pole this is one tip this is another tip for this north pole this is one tip this is another tip is it okay for you so let me give names for this uh, tips tips okay i say okay, poll tips let me give names for this uh, tips okay generator point of answering generator point of you please tell me names for the poll tips see guys uh, in the direction of generator in the direction of generator means that in the direction of tpm i should take in the direction of tpm means you should take clock anti clock or clock see in the direction of clockwise rotation i mean to say clockwise means we are taking tpm as reference you are giving names generator point of view so please guys in the direction of generator for if you if you take example south pole if you take example south pole so tell me for south pole which tip you are facing first you are facing this tip or you are facing this tip please try to see clearly in the direction of our tpm in the direction of generator i am asking you among this uh, one and two which tip you are facing first this tip only you know you are coming across first this tip then you are coming across this tip so this tip uh, name i can give it as what here leading pole tip leading pole tip leading pole tip after facing this tip then we are facing this tip that's why i am giving i am just giving name for this tip as a trailing pole tip trailing pole tip or one more name is there if you want you can write down trailing pole tip or uh, lagging pole tip trailing pole tip or i can say lagging pole tip similarly in the direction of generator so tell me in under under this north pole uh, you are having this tip and this tip so, but among these two tips uh, you are facing first this tip uh, so that's why let me give name for this tip as what leading pole tip leading pole tip leading pole tip is it okay for you now what about remaining tip i can say trailing pole tip or i can say lagging pole tip trailing pole tip or i can say lagging pole tip okay guys so these are the names for pole tips generator point of view i think immediately some people may get doubt what is that sir that means uh, for uh, if you take reference as motor motor that means anti clockwise direction so for anti clockwise rotation if you take example uh, north pole in this north pole if you take this tip uh, initially i wrote it as trailing pole tip now it becomes what for if you consider the term motor rotation yes for motor rotation so for anti clockwise rotation for anti clockwise direction uh, in this north pole first you are able to see this tip uh, that's why this tip becomes trail i mean leading pole tip next this tip becomes trailing pole tip 
this becomes a leading positive this becomes a trailing positive so guys please try to understand for generator if you take example generator in this example this becomes a leading trailing leading trailing for in case of motor so this becomes a leading trailing leading trail so but i'm just giving uh, here generator point of view i'm just giving uh, names so leading trailing leading trailing whatever i just wrote here this is gener generator point of view so please just try to remember that suppose for motor point of view means you have to uh, change the names okay guys right now please what about uh, next one so please try to understand here one let me have some simple uh, uh, things here very important uh, points here try to understand clearly yeah so, yes guys so guys now try to understand clearly here yeah under trailing pole dip in this case generator point of view trailing pole dip so tell me at this tip at north pole trailing pole dip i'm asking at north pole trailing pole dip so tell me what the direction of uh, your yellow color and uh, blue color they are in same direction or they are opposite direction or try to understand clearly i am asking direction of your uh, yellow color flux lines direction of your uh, blue color flux nothing but direction of main flux direction of armistice flux they are they are in same direction do you agree or not see if you take tangential motion of this uh, pi a pi a so this the pi m is uh, from left to right it is also almost all from uh, see i'll i'll show you otherwise for your understanding point of view i'll take some other portion here see let me take this one see this one left to right no almost all this pi m pi a is from left to right your pi m is also from left to right that means your pi a is aiding with your pi m that means your uh, flux is uh, becoming strengthening or weakening uh, it's becoming strengthening no so simply right here you are getting a strengthening effect here you are getting strengthening effect strengthening effect strengthening effect okay strengthening effect so that means whenever pi a is aiding with your pi m can i call that effect as magnetizing effect yes let me write simply me magnetizing effect means let me write it simply as me effect me effect okay guys so similarly tell me what about uh, uh, let me take another point let me take this point let me take this point here so please guys here i'm saying what about direction of your yellow color and direction of your uh, let me use laser point so that you'll be having some clarity yeah direction of yellow color and direction of blue color i'm asking is it same opposite term? same opposite please try to think clearly and tell me answer same opposite see you are uh, try to understand clearly here let me show let me take one more uh, line here for main flux so, so that it have some clarity it's what i can say main flux and if you see guys your uh, pi a is what opposing or aiding see it's almost like this no it is uh, from left to right whereas, whereas this one is almost uh, from right to left okay that means it is opposing right your pi m and uh, pi a they are opposing here they are opposing here that means they are opposing means uh, so i can write here weakening effect uh, or strengthening effect uh, you should write here you know weakening effect let me write here weakening effect here please weakening effect weakening effect weakening effect so one more name is simply i can write as dm you know d magnetism because your pi a is opposing your uh, pi m so that's the reason why i can write here dm effect dm is what here demagnetizing effect demagnetizing effect okay similarly what about in this case please try to understand clearly so so it's very simple only please try to take more flux lines if you want you'll be having some clarity see example i'm just discussing here so if you want to decide direction of your uh, pi m let me take like this just take more flux lines so that you'll be having uh, clarity you will not be having any confusion yes 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 okay so if you take a uh, see example here so your yellow color flux lines and uh, blue color say so almost in same direction so try to understand there is nothing to confuse here so pi m is left to right and if you take pi a tangential motion so almost all from uh, left to right only left to right only left to right only you know left to right only okay therefore once again they are uh, I mean aiding I can write here strengthening effect very simple things only so please try to have some consideration you'll be having clarity so strengthening effect strengthening effect so nothing but your pi a is uh, aiding pi m that's why you are going to have here which effect me effect magnetizing effect magnetizing effect simple 
Similarly, what about here? Leading pole tip of your south pole, I'm asking. Okay. So please tell me what about in this situation? See here, your pi a is like this, no? And what about pi uh, m is like this almost all? Okay. Try to understand clearly. That means it is opposing your uh, pi m or aiding your pi m. I'm asking pi a is opposing or aiding. See, this try to see this uh, this arrow mark and try to see this uh, pi a arrow mark. They're opposing or what? They're opposing almost all. Therefore, I write simply here. Since pi a is opposing your pi m, so I can write here weakening effect, weakening effect, weakening effect, nothing but you can say dme effect, weakening effect, I can say dm effect, okay, weakening effect, or I can say dm effect. Is it okay for you? Right. So, guys, so now please try to understand clearly. Ultimately, if you take in this example. So on a trailing pole tip, we are having a strengthening effect. See, trailing pole tip, we are having a strengthening effect. And we, I mean, leading pole tip, we are having weakening effect here. Weakening effect. We, leading pole tip means weakening effect we are having. Okay. So my question to you guys. So do you think that uh, strengthening effect is equal to weakening effect here? That means how much flux is uh, increased at a trailing pole tip? Do you think that same amount of flux is uh, reduced at a leading pole tip here? No, no, it's not actually. Actually, practically, it is not possible. Suppose uh, if you if you say how much flux is increasing, how much flux is strengthening at a trailing pole tip of north pole, if same amount of flux is uh, weakening at a leading pole tip of north pole means so definitely average value of flux under each pole will be same. Average value of flux under each pole will be same. Example, if it is south pole also, if uh, weakening, how much flux is weakening at a leading pole tip, if it is equal to uh, strengthening uh, flux at a trailing pole tip, so average value of flux will be, average value of flux under south pole will be same, no? Okay. That means ideally, if you say, if uh, strengthening effect is equal to weakening effect, average value of flux under each pole will be same. Practically, it is not possible. So tell me which one is more dominated. I'm asking strengthening is more dominated or weakening is more dominated. I'm a simple question. Strengthening is what flux increasing, increasing, increasing like that. Okay. Weakening effect means what flux reducing, reducing, reducing. So tell me which one is more dominated. Obviously, so weakening effect is more dominated than strengthening effect. Any reason? What is the reason why weakening effect is more dominated than uh, strengthening effect, guys? Because if you see at trailing pole tip, in our example, if you take a north pole trailing tip, north pole trailing trip, uh, north pole trailing pole tip, or uh, south pole trailing pole tip, uh, you are having strengthening, strengthening effect, right? That means flux is increase, increasing. It, it is not possible, I mean, uh, to I mean to to large extent because. So, because of strengthening effect, flux is increasing, increasing because of a saturation concept, because of saturation of the trailing pole tip. So, flux reaches one particular value. Thereafter, there is no strengthening effect. Thereafter, there is no strengthening effect. Okay, that means there is some limitation for your uh, strengthening effect because of saturation at a trailing pole tip. But what about weakening effect? Flux can uh, reduce, 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 will come to zero also. That means tell me among the strengthening effect and weakening effect, which one is more dominated? So obviously weakening effect is more dominated, no? That means ultimately because of RMH reaction in DC machine, we are going to have ME effect or DM effect. So tell me which one is more dominated here? Weakening effect is more dominated, no? Because I told you strengthening effect is it is having some limitation. So flux will increase, increase, increase up to one, up to one value, up to one value only. Uh, whenever, uh, whenever because of saturation or trailing pole tip, uh, so flux will not increase uh, after reach one particular value. Therefore, there is some limitation for strengthening effect. But whereas for weakening effect, flux will come to reduce, 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 it will come to zero also, right? Therefore, obviously, among strengthening and weakening, which one is more dominated means weakening effect is more dominated because of saturation trailing pole tip. That means uh, because of RMH reaction DC mission, you are going to have which effect means is it ME or DME? So obviously DME, don't say ME. Don't say me, you say only DME only. That only, guys, I had given clearly here. Try to understand here. So, please let me show here. Yeah, 
so if you see this figure if you see this figure so i think not for north pole i just showed here trailing pole tip here leading pole tip uh, for south pole leading pole tip for south pole trailing pole tip at the trailing pole tip, i show you may magnetic in the me effect here also me effect at leading dme dm if you want i'll show you one second this figure yes see north pole this trailing me south pole mean uh, leading okay so dme and here north pole uh, I, I told you leading dme south pole uh, uh, trailing m same thing so only i just wrote here okay guys so please try to see pi m and pi are aiding with each other under uh, trailing pole tip region therefore net plus will increase so let me show you here in this figure only in this trailing pole tip pi m and pi a they are adding therefore flux is increasing in this region and in this region okay trailing pole tip region okay uh, and what about at a leading pole tip uh, pi a is opposing your pi m uh, so net plus will reduce here net plus will reduce uh, at leading pole tip here also leading pole tip okay so guys please try to see here pi m and pi a are aiding with each other at trailing pole tip net plus will increase okay whereas pi m and pi are opposing with each other under leading pole tip uh, net plus will reduce but here my question is tell me which one is more dominated that is my question here okay so pi m and pi a are aiding with each other under trailing pole tip so net plus link is okay pi m and pi a are opposing with each other under leading pole tip region net plus will reduce that is also okay but if strengthening effect at trailing pole tip is equal to weakening effect at leading pole tip i told you average value of flux per pole is same but what is the main problem i told you are practically but practically weakening effect is more uh, than the strengthening effect what is the reason due to saturation at a trailing pole tip so there is some limitation for your strengthening effect weakening effect is more than strengthening effect uh, therefore because of rmh reaction dme occurs from now onwards guys don't see me okay so because of rmh reaction dc machine we are going to have d magnetizing effect d magnetizing effect okay if you observe clearly i told you here uh, initially if there is no pi a if there is no rmh flux here is excuse me if there is no rmh flux if there is no blue color flux uh, if only uh, yellow color flux lines are there so flux is uniform distributed so under uh, north pole if you see under this trailing put how much is there under leading pole tip also same amount of flux is there but now because of pi is coming to picture because of rmh reaction under trailing pole tip of your north pole more flux under leading pole tip of your north pole less flux okay under leading pole tip of uh, south pole uh, weakening effect no less flux and trailing pole tip of south pole you have to show more flux so guys please let me show that uh, here with uh, some other color that only becomes uh, your resultant flux okay result of flux okay so i told you here you have to show more amount of flux here let me use some uh, different color yeah under trailing pole tip more amount of flux see more amount of flux more amount of flux more amount of flux here okay whereas under leading uh, let me show less amount of flux here so i told you here more amount of more amount of flux trailing pole tip let me show that first of all yes yes i'm just showing more amount of flux at trailing pole tip okay guys this is what i can say uh, direction of your uh, resultant flux so why i'm just showing like this means I, I told you here it is more me effect here also me effect okay here dm means is not exactly zero some amount of uh, less flux will be there but let me take almost of zero flux here so here resultant flux becomes uh, like this okay is it okay for you so yes because of dme you'll be having less amount of flux in a leading pole tip leading pole tip of north pole south pole and because of me effect you'll be having more amount of flux at trailing pole tip of north pole trailing pole tip of your uh, south pole also guys so here i'm just showing i'm, I'm just I'm, I'm not at all showing any flux lens here that means uh, i'm just showing almost a zero but to be frank yes some amount of flux will be there under uh, leading pole leading pole tip of north pole under leading pole tip of south pole also definitely when we are, when compared with your uh, me when compared with your uh, flux amount at trailing pole tip at leading pole tip flux amount will be less but it's not zero but i'm just showing uh, assuming it as zero so your result flux becomes uh, like this okay guys and i think i already told you mna magnetically neutral axis 
is the one which is the perpendicular to home. See, it is the perpendicular to home here. The resultant flux, I can say area flux. Previous in this figure, under no load condition, I told you MNA and ZNA, why they are coinciding means, under no load, your pi equal to zero. Your pi r itself becomes, I got pi m. That's the reason, under no load condition, pi r is pi m and pi m is pi m only. So obviously, your uh, MNA and ZNA will be coinciding. But now, because of uh, uh, under low, I mean load condition, because of Armitch reaction, your uh, resultant flux distribution becomes uh, in this manner. In this manner, okay. Now, obviously, yes, always your MNA will be perpendicular to your uh, resultant flux. No, so obviously, yes, initially MNA is at uh, see M G N A and MNA they are uh, under no load conditions, they are coinciding. Uh, but under load condition, because of uh, IA will come into picture, because of RMH plus will come into picture, MNA shift from a GNA, see this is the GNX, no, this is the GNA. MNA shift from GNA by an angle theta, okay. So in the direction of generator, see the direction of generator means clockwise. In the direction of generator, your MNA shifts by an angle of theta, so thereby your MNA will be perpendicular to whom here? Regional flux, okay guys. So this theta depending on the load. If uh, light load, less amount of theta. If more load, more amount of data. Very simple. Okay, guys. So, this is what I can say MNA is a perpendicular to your uh, resident flux, which is shifted from a GNA under load condition by an angle theta in the direction of generator. Is it okay for you? Now, I'll give definitely I'll give reason why uh, magnet neutral axis means why I told it is axis along which uh, no induced EMF. Why I told like that means very simple. Let us see here, you'll be having some clarity. So let me take example, MNA is this one. Let me take one connect here. So let me use another, uh, okay, let me take one connect here. Let me take another few, another color. If you take one conductor along MNA, one connector along MNA like this. Example for clockwise rotation, for clockwise rotation, direction transition motion at this connector will be like this. And at this connector, it will be like this. Okay, guys, right. You know, in this generator, uh, dynamic EMF will be induced. ED equals what is the formula? B L V sine theta. What about theta? Theta is the angle between what and what? It is angle between linear velocity of the conductor and the magnet flux density. You know, guys, in this example, magnet flux density means resident magnet flux density means this like this. No, this red color flux lines. And what about linear velocity? This blue color lines. So that, tell me what is the angle between this blue color arrow mark and the red color arrow mark? Once again, zero only. No. So whenever it is zero, what about ED value equal to zero? Yes, there is no EMF. That's why I told if uh, conductors are placed along MNA. So since MNA is the perpendicular to your resonant flux, uh, so theta becomes uh, zero. The induced EMF will becomes zero. That's why I told here it is the axis along which no induced EMF. Simple. Okay. Now see if you want, you can take this point also. If you take this connector also here. Direction of your uh, linear velocity V means in this uh, in this way and direction of B means uh, this red color. So what is the angle between your uh, blue color arrow mark and red color arrow mark? It's nothing but 180 degrees, no? 180 degrees. So if you take 180 degrees once again here, yes, once again sine 180 means uh, 0 only, ED becomes 0. So guys, please try to understand. So MNA means what is the uh, depression for that? MNA means what is the depression for that I can give? It is the axis along which no induced EM. Okay guys? Now please let us see whatever I discussed till now. Those only I just wrote it here. Please let me uh, uh, study so that you will have some clarity. Under load condition, because of RMH reaction, MNA shifts from GNA by an angle theta in the direction of the right. This point I already explained. Just same thing I just wrote here. Because of this, see, whenever uh, MNA shifts from GNA by an angle theta in the direction of generator, so if you observe clearly, guys. Please tell me, do you think that under uh, North Pole, under South Pole, if you take anyone, so do you think that the flux is a uniform distributed here? No. If you take example North Pole, let me take example North Pole here. Okay. So here it is a uh, more amount of flux, no? So let me use some other color. Excuse me. Yeah. Otherwise, let me use simple. Okay. Here, I, I, I can say more amount of flux here. See, more amount of flux in this region because here, uh, because of ME effect. And what about here? Less amount of flux here. Less amount of flux. That means, do you think that the flux waveform is uniform distributed here? No. It's no. Okay. No. Obviously, it's not. No. It is not, uh, I can say, uh, flux is not uniform distributed. 
so that too if you observe clearly initially if there is no pi a if there is no armature uh, flux uh, if only pi m is there so your pi m is direction, direction of pi m is from left to right so it is uniform distributed example if there is no pi a how much amount of flux is there in this region same amount of flux in this region also in this everywhere same no but here because of armature reaction whenever pi a is coming to picture effect of our pi a and pi m will be having a, a dm effect on the leading pole tip me effect on the trailing pole tip so more amount of flux at the trailing pole tip less amount of flux at the leading pole tip so flux becomes uh, it is not uniform distributed because of this see if you see try, try to understand clearly if you observe clearly here if you observe clearly here so flux waveform is flux path is a uh, disturbed here flux path is disturbed it is uh, not a uh, uniform distributed because of that what are the effects we are going to have means i told you one already dm effect and another one i told you cross magnetizing effect i'll tell you how it is possible cross magnetic effect if you want i can show you here cross magnetic effect means angle between pi m and pi a should be equals 90 degrees if you want you can show guys let me show you yes let me uh, show you here so what is the angle between in this region okay i told you here pi m and pi the rating yes they are opposed okay and tell me guys what about in this region how pi a and pi m they are is making one by how much angle it is making 90 degrees no making 90 degrees means what in this region you will be having a cross magnetizing effect cross magnetizing effect means like this if uh, pi a is like this and uh, pi m is uh, from left to right it's purely cross magnetizing like this so angle becomes almost almost 90 degrees here so whenever angle between pi m and pi is 90 degrees you are going to have cross magnetizing effect like this okay so because of cross magnetizing effect we are going to have a sparking at the brushes poor commutation delayed commutation under commutation so many problems we are going to have we'll discuss all this in uh, a coming session so please try to see here let me write one point here so because of uh, under lo load condition because armature reaction mn shifts from gna by an angle theta in the direction of generator which leads to sparking at brushes and unsuccessful commutation i'll tell you so i'll tell you i already told you because of cross magnetizing effect i told you because of cross magnetizing, cross magnetizing effect having a sparking at the brushes sparking at the brushes or i can say one more thing unsuccessful commutation thing, but uh, poor commutation i'll tell you commutation process one topic is it there will be having some clarity poor commutation or i can say delayed commutation delayed commutation or i can say under commutation under commutation so so many problems will come into picture under commutation under commutation okay guys so let us see how we have to reduce this uh, sparking at the pressures that means if you want to reduce sparking at the pressures uh, reduce the power commutation uh, reduce the dl i mean uh, you know, reduce the DL, delayed commutation all if you want to overcome these problems uh, if you want to reduce cme effect uh, so how how can you reduce cm effect all those things we'll see actually in olden days one uh, method they were following what is that shifting i can say brushes also along mn see previously uh, brushes are here and under no load condition uh, gn and mn is here only under load condition under load condition mn is uh, coming here no brushes are, brushes are here so what they will do now they will shift uh, brushes along mna in this manner they'll shift brushes along mna like this okay so if we if we shift brushes along mna then we can uh we can reduce the cross magnetic effect we can reduce the sparkling brushes we can improve computation all those things that mean how we are doing all this we'll see clearly just wait for some time so that one i wrote here but brushes are uh, shown always place along mna that means you have to shift brushes along mna in order to achieve sparkless at the brushes that is successful commutation to reduce cme effect to i mean to improve commutation all those things you have to shift brushes along mna okay that i'll tell you how okay and uh, this is these are the definitions for your uh, tailing pole tip or leading pole tip if you want you can study okay it's a very simple definition i had given try to study that and let us see guys how will uh, improve cm effect how will reduce the uh, sorry i mean i mean how we can reduce the uh, uh, cross magnetic effect 
how we'll reduce the part of the brushes, how we'll improve computation by shifting brushes along MN. That is our next topic, okay? So, this one you see, shifting brushes along MN to reduce CME. See, guys, I already told you, reducing CME nothing but reducing sparking the brushes, improving computation. So, all this, okay, we'll, we'll see how uh, we'll uh, reduce cross matrix effect, how we'll reduce the sparking brushes, all those things we'll explain clearly. So, before that, guys, you actually uh, we will discuss this one, but in future, I'll tell you because of improper, because of poor commutation, because of poor commutation, how you will get spark with the brushes. First of all, what is the definition of commutation? All those things we'll see clearly, don't worry. So, but anyway, I'll we'll discuss here for time being, you please assume that because of cross magnetizing effect, you will get spark with the brushes. You'll get a, a poor computation. So, if you want to reduce pattern brushes, if you want to improve the computation, if you want to reduce the CME, in olden days they were shifting brushes along MNA. That how all this we'll see. Uh, okay, before that, guys, you tell me now. I think by this time only you might have get uh, some knowledge because RMX reaction I got two effects. Number one, DME. Number two, what CME? Cross matrix effect. Okay. Now tell me because of demagnetizing effect, DM effect, what will happen to net flux? Uh, flux will reduce. In a DC generator, what is the problem for that? You know formula E is equal to pi Z N P by 60A. When now flux is reducing, what will happen? E Z value also will reduce, no? So obviously because reduction of your net flux, the uh, EMF will reduce. There is a there is a drawback in uh, DC generator. And what is the drawback in DC motor? We'll see guys, this relation will be there. I'll show you how this relation is coming. N proportion EBB pi. And I'll show you one more relation. T proportion to pi and I will uh, see this okay, in future uh, videos. So when our flux is reducing here, what will happen to speed here? Speed will increase. That means because of RMH reaction, because of DME effect, what will happen to speed of the motor? It will increase, simple concept. And uh, because of RMH reaction, because of DME, if flux reduces, what will happen to torque also? Torque will reduce. So guys, please try to understand. So what are the problems because of demagnetizing effect in DC generator means EMF will reduce. In DC motor, what are the problems means? Speed will increase, torque will reduce. Okay. And what about because of our much reaction, I told you in addition to DME, we are going to have a CME effect also, cross magnetizing effect also. Okay. Because of cross magnetic effect, what are the problems you are going to have means? I'll tell you. So, we'll be, we'll be having a poor commutation. We'll be having what here? Poor commutation. Don't worry. First of all, uh, if we discuss the commutation, then you'll be having some clarity. What is going to be poor commutation? What is going to be, what is going to be good commutation? All those things. So, in future videos, we'll be discussing uh, commutation, all those things. Okay. We'll be having poor commutation, or I can say delayed commutation. What is that? Delayed commutation. Delayed commutation. Or I can say under commutation, under commutation, under commutation, and because of all those problems, uh, we'll be having a uh, sparking at the brushes. What is that? Sparking at the brushes, sparking at the brushes. Okay, sparking at the brushes. Okay, guys, right. Now, to be frank, <coughs> we'll discuss how we have to overcome this uh, DME and CME, all those things means. So please try to see here, I'll write some uh, point here. To be frank, DME can be reduced uh, by using uh, by using compensating winding CW. What is that? Compensating winding CW, which we'll discuss in future videos. DME effect can be reduced by using compensating winding, which we'll discuss coming videos. Next, how can you reduce CME means, cross magnetic effect means, in olden days, we were using one uh, concept. What is that? Shifting of brushes. Let me write here. Shifting of brushes. Shifting of brushes along. Shifting of brushes along. MN. This one method. Okay. And if you want, I mean, one more method is there. What is that? Using a uh, interpose. What is that? Using interpose. Using interpose. Okay. So using interpose. Okay. In the next video, we'll be discussing the shifting of brushes along MNA. Because of shifting of brushes along MNA, 
how can we reduce CME? We'll discuss. And what are the problems we are going to face? We'll discuss that. Okay. Next, uh, uh, in nowadays, actually, it's, a, it's an outdated method. Shifting of brushes along MN is an outdated method. Nowadays, we are using interpoles. Okay. That interpoles also will be seeing in the coming videos. Okay. So in the next video, in the next video, I'll be discussing how we have to reduce cross magnetizing effect. Cross magnetizing effect because of shifting brushes along the MNA that I'll be saving I'll be seeing in the next video okay guys and uh, composite winding or uh, what about uh, interpoles and the combination process all those things also we'll see but slowly one by one we'll see okay guys thank you